Yo, I'm really hungry. I gotta get some bread. What? Somebody stole all of my bread. Hey guys, welcome back to Church of Minecraft. So, I was wondering what I should talk about today, and all of my bread got stolen. I have no bread today. So, um, that got me thinking, what would the world be like if nobody ever stole anything? Things would be a lot better. There would be much less fighting, much fewer wars. There are a lot of things that everyone knows is right and wrong, and yet they still do it. So, this video today will be about the Ten Commandments. Now, um, even if you're not religious, the Ten Commandments do contain a lot of universal truths that everyone agrees on, and um, most major religions actually do follow the Ten Commandments. Christianity and Judaism both follow them, and Islam has some form of them. And uh, everyone, different uh, branches of Christianity and Judaism number them a bit differently, but it's all the same set of commandments. And they're all written out here. I have the Ten Commandments written out on the on the benches, the pews of the church, right here. Now, before we begin, it's time for some organ music. Now, I'm going to read these commandments one by one, and I'm going to show why each of them would make the world a much better place if people actually followed them. So the first one is, worship only the Lord your God. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I don't need God to be good, I can be good on my own. But if that were true, then why do so many people still steal and murder each other? Obviously, we as humanity need some reason to follow basic moral goodness, and yet we don't. So that shows there's something really wrong with us, and we need some kind of motivation to be good. And history shows that there's no stronger motivation than believing in an all-powerful God. And if there's one God, there is one author of truth and morality, and that gives us a really good reason to know what's right and to do what's right. So, um, if people truly worshipped God and truly cared about doing what um, he wants rather than just using his name for power, which we'll talk about uh, a few commandments later, then the world would be a much better place. But this one, the first commandment, serves as kind of a preface for the others, because you have to um, worship God to care about following his commandments, his commands. So the second one is don't have anything as your idol. So an idol is something you worship instead of God. For some people it's power, for some people it's money, for some people it's their social status. The thing is, if you put anything before God, then you're going to care about that thing more than you care about doing what's right. Since God is the author of morality, if you care about power more than God, you'll care about power more than morality, and then you'll be able to do, you'll be willing to do immoral things to get power. And that's what causes a lot of evil in the world, because people are hungry for power, and they don't care about the moral implications of it. So if people only worshipped God and did not put anything before God, not even power or money, the world would be a much better place. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You've, you're thinking, well, there are a lot of religious people who do really bad things in the name of religion, and they are hungry for power, and they use religion to try and get power. Now, that leads us to the third commandment. God specifically says not to, to do that, because the third commandment says, do not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Now, a lot of people think this commandment only means don't say things like OMG, which, which it does, but it also means don't use God's name for the wrong thing. Don't use God's name for evil, or don't use God's name for your own goals, because a lot of people throughout history have used God's name to try and get their own power or their own money. Think of, like, prosperity gospel preachers today, or the church leaders in the Middle Ages. They all used God's name to trick people into giving them money. Now, doing evil in God's name is terrible, even worse than doing evil not in God's name, because you're turning people away from God by doing so. So, the world would be a much better place if people truly followed God and didn't twist his name and his word to do evil. Now, the fourth commandment is remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Now, the Sabbath, back in the days of ancient Israel, when these commandments were written, 
the Sabbath was a very strict day where everyone had to do nothing. In uh, For Christians nowadays, that's not what the rule is. Some of these rules have um, been altered because of what happened, and I'll, I'll get to that later. But it's still uh, very important to take one day a week off devoted to God. For most Christians, this is Sunday in which they go to church. And uh, for Jews, it's uh, Saturday when they go to synagogue. And for Muslims, it's Friday. But um, it's very important to uh, dedicate one day of the week to God. You should always follow God, but one day of the week where you specifically focus on God because you need to be reminded to follow these commandments. Not only do you need to know that God is the author of morality, you need to take time to remember that your life should be devoted to him because he is the creator of everything, including you. Now, the fifth commandment is honor your father and mother. Now, in today's world, a lot of us object to that. A lot of people think that, like, they want to rebel against their parents. But that's actually not cool. Because, for the most part, unless parents are, like, literally abusive, you know, they feed you, they raise you. So your parents deserve your respect. Even That doesn't mean you have to like doing what they tell you to do. It doesn't mean you need to be pleased with them. It just means you need to honor them. Because no one will ever put in more work for you than your parents will. Nobody. Not your friends. No one. So your parents deserve honor, even if you don't always agree with them. Now the sixth commandment... Oh, that, that's the tenth. Whoops. The sixth commandment is, do not take any innocent human life. Now, uh, what it actually says is do not murder, but when I wrote it out, I defined murder as taking innocent human life because that's what it is. No, it does not say do not kill because you can kill like an animal. You shouldn't be abuse an animal, but it does not say don't kill animals. It says don't kill innocent humans. You, you can kill uh, someone in self-defense. That's not murder. That's self-defense. Murder is killing an innocent human, and any form of taking a human life no matter what, no matter what kind or form of human life it is, taking any human life is always wrong. Always, no matter what. And there are a lot of people in today's world who really need to know that. There are massive genocides going on at the time of this video. There's a really bad one happening in China right now. And even around the world, there are a lot, there, there's also a genocide that a lot of people don't think is a genocide. So they need to recognize any form of uh, taking innocent human life is always wrong. And if people followed this, there would be no genocides. But a lot of people, but murder still happens all the time, and genocide still happens, no matter how many times the world tries to stop it. So, there's something very wrong with the human heart if these terrible atrocities keep happening. Now, the seventh commandment is do not cheat on your wife or husband. It says don't commit adultery, but that's what committing adultery is. It means cheating on your wife or husband. Now, nothing ruins families more than adultery, and families are necessary to hold society together. And adultery um, usually results in the end of a marriage, and that is incredibly emotionally painful for both people. Even if a marriage isn't good, even if it's not satisfactory, it's still never okay to cheat on someone who devoted their life to you. Now, our culture often says that you should do whatever makes you happy, but that is not true. I don't agree with that, because sometimes it might make you happy in the moment to cheat on your wife or husband, but that's still never okay to do, even if the relationship is not going so well. It's still never okay to cheat, no matter what. And families would stay together much more if nobody ever cheated. Now, the eighth commandment is what I referenced in the beginning. Do not take from someone what belongs to them. In other words, do not steal. Now, in a Jewish tradition, uh, stealing is uh, means taking anything from someone, not just like a, a material thing. So gossiping counts as breaking the eighth commandment because you're stealing someone's good name. And there are other parts of the Bible that says you shouldn't gossip, so I think it's fair to say that this commandment applies to that, too. Now, it should be obvious why stealing's wrong. It's, you know, it, it's not yours. But a lot of people think it's okay as long as they don't get caught. But remember the first commandment. You must worship only the Lord your God. And uh, I think it's very important to believe that there is an objective morality made by an objective supreme being. So, um... 
if nobody ever stole anything, we, we wouldn't need, like, if nobody ever stole or murdered, we'd need no police, we'd need no, uh, a, a lot of people would, um, have a lot more because things wouldn't be taken from them. Now there's, like, burglaries, but there are also, like, more subtle ways of stealing, like, you know, rich people often steal from the poor in a more subtle way. Sometimes it's even in a legal way, but uh, there are a lot of people who scam uh, those who are less privileged than them. So that counts as stealing, too. And if people really want to follow God, they got to not only not do that, but they got to call it out when they see that happening. Because a lot of poverty results from resources being stolen from communities and stuff. Now, the ninth commandment is do not lie about what someone else did. In other words, don't bear false witness. Now, bearing false witness is one of the worst things you can do to someone because someone's going to suffer a punishment for something they never even did. Now, this is not just saying don't lie. It's not good to lie at all. But it's really never okay, no matter what, to lie about what someone did, to say they did something that they didn't because then you'll have an innocent person being punished for something they didn't do. Now, if people were always honest, then we'd be able to punish all criminals, and no one would ever be falsely accused. But because we humans want to justify our own evil actions and we want to blame others, false witness happens a lot. And that's why it's very hard to have a, a justice system that works, because a lot of people are wrongly accused, and a lot of people who do bad things get away with it. Now, the Tenth Commandment is do not covet what is not yours. Now, covet means to want. To want. Don't, like, want something that someone else has. Now, that doesn't mean... Now, the word covet doesn't mean you, you, like, you wish you had it. Like, if someone has a good job, you wish you had it. Covet means you want it to belong to you. And coveting is always what happens before you steal something. So now, when someone stole my bread... By the way, that didn't actually happen. That was just me acting it out for the sake of this uh, sermon... Now, when, when the imaginary fake person stole my bread, first, they had to covet my bread. They wanted my bread. So, um, every evil action begins with an evil thought in the heart. And this shows that God not only looks at what we do, God looks at what we think. He knows everything. And uh, wanting to do something bad is almost as bad as actually doing it. And uh, Jesus talks about that later. So now we've gone over all the Ten Commandments. So, let me, for those of you who don't know, tell you where we got the Ten Commandments. The first five books of the Bible in Hebrew are called the Torah, which, mean, which is the Hebrew word for law. Now, this is the law of God. It's the law that God gave to his people, the Israelites. And the Ten Commandments are kind of like the highlight of the law. They kinda, they're kind of they the most important parts of the law. Now, not every, every law in the Torah is followed by Christians today because we have some uh, reasons for why we don't follow some of them and why we're allowed to not follow some of them, and that's very complicated. But um, the Ten Commandments definitely still do apply to Christians just the way they apply to Jews and Muslims, and I think should apply to everyone, because the world would be so much of a better place if people actually did follow them. Now, Moses was the one who received the Ten Commandments from God, and he gave them to the Israelites, and they're the most influential law code in history, even more influential than, like, Hammurabi's code. Um, and Jesus, too, has something to say about the Ten Commandments. Now, there are a lot of laws that God has given his people throughout history, but one time someone asked Jesus what the most important law was, and this is what he said, as... With all of the sayings of Jesus, this was a very profound answer. So I'm reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, this is chapter 22, and I have to turn to verse 34. So um, uh, one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, what, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Now, what Jesus is saying here is that every law that God gives is based on the two greatest commandments, which are to love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And that includes the Ten Commandments. Each one of the Ten Commandments is either about loving God or loving your neighbor. 
Now, the first four commandments, worship only the Lord your God, don't worship anything else, uh, don't misuse the name of God, and remember the Sabbath, like dedicate it one day to God, those are all about loving the Lord your God. Now, the rest of the commandments about, like, don't murder, don't steal, don't lie about what other people did, or don't cheat on your husband or wife, all of those commandments are about loving your neighbor as yourself. So the most important laws in the Bible are love God and love your neighbor. Not only are they the most important, every single law in the Bible has to do with loving God or loving your neighbor, because it's all about love. God is love, and God wants us to love him and love one another. And yet we don't do that. Even people who claim to follow God often don't do that, and that's why the third commandment is so important. Don't misuse God's name. But it's very important that we recognize that there is objective morality. There are things that are right or wrong, regardless of what we think about it. And God is telling us, by giving us these commandments, that he wants us to love one another. And by giving us all these laws, he tells us how we should do that. And the thing is, loving your neighbor is also loving God, because God loves everyone, and he wants us to love each other no matter what, even when we wrong each other, because we know we're all sinners and we all need uh, forgiveness. That's why we all needed Jesus to die for us. So uh, a lot of people are wondering, oh, why do I need God to tell me to be good? Now, like I said, it's a good motivation. And the reason it's a good motivation is because if you don't believe in God, then goodness is just something that humans invented. And who are we? We're, we're just some, like, apes on a planet. But if you do believe in God, then you believe that love is older than the universe. The Bible says God is love because God is Trinity. Three persons who are all the same one God who have been loving each other since before the universe existed. God is love, and God sent his son to die for us because of how much he loved us. If he did that, we can love each other. And to do that, we must follow the commandments of the Lord. Have a great week.